Hello everyone, Dylan Abernathy here. I hope you're all doing pretty well. Uh, I'm back a little bit sooner than I expected. I actually just started working on a new tutorial video uh, that I'm going to be sort of chipping away at over the next couple of weeks when I was actually approached by a company called Rendero uh, to do a sponsored video for you guys. Now, I've been approached a couple of times to do sponsored videos, but never found any of them too useful or relevant. So whenever people do approach me, I usually turn them down just because it's not kind of anything worth sharing or spreading around. Uh, but this company was pretty cool. What they wanted to do is make a video where I could explain to you guys what the, the product is and the service is. And uh, it's actually something useful and something I actually would have used in college, like for a fact, and maybe even use in the future. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, so what Rendero does is it's one of those services that allows you to sort of connect through the cloud to a computer uh, so you can do video editing, animation, rendering, whatever you want to on really, really high quality hardware. Um, so I've heard of these quite a bit actually and for quite a while. Uh, I never really thought they were for games though. I never thought they were something that we could do with uh, game art because a lot of the stuff that we do is in real time, right? Um, but after chatting with the team and sort of getting a better idea as to how it can sort of be applied to what we do, yeah, I was like, okay, I actually really wish I did have this uh, back in the day when I was in college. And I think I've kind of marketed my channel quite a bit to sort of people starting or people in college or people learning game art. And um, that's why I thought like, hey, since this service is actually useful, I don't mind making a video like this because I would have wanted to, to have a better understanding of these things back in the day. And it probably would have saved me quite a bit of time actually. Um, so the way that all this works is what you do is after you create your account, you link uh, a drive to your computer and it kind of works very similar to Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that, where it's a bridge between your computer and uh, the computer you're going to be remoting into. So you make that, you can drag whatever files you want into there. Uh, very, very intuitive. That's like one thing I have to give them a lot of credit on. Every single thing on their website is explained really well and really simply, uh, which is great. Don't want anything to be overcomplicated. Uh, and once you do that, you dive into setting up what kind of computer you want. Now, this is actually really cool because there's quite a like wide range of computers and some of them get like pretty stupid powerful. Uh, there's four things to choose from and obviously the more powerful the computer is, the more it costs per, per hour to use. Um, so for the test that I actually ended up doing, I did the recommended computer, which is about two and a half dollars an hour, uh, which is pretty, pretty reasonable when you think about it. And it blew my computer out of the water completely. So this computer had 16 gigabytes of uh, GPU memory, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and about 40 gigahertz of processing power. Uh, and if you go all the way up to the expensive, crazy stuff, there's one that has four GPUs running at 64 gigabytes, 192 gigabytes of RAM, and uh, 48 GPUs running at two and a half gigahertz each so you can get some pretty crazy stuff if you're trying to render out or, or, or perform some crazy crazy high intensive stuff um, yeah it's pretty cool so while using these uh, cloud computers you can pretty much do whatever you want like you would on your own normal computer but there's two main reasons I wanted to sort of partner with them and make this video that I think are actually really beneficial to game artists and uh, students specifically or people who are working remotely or doing stuff from home uh, the first is that anytime you have to do a sort of heavy processing, long performing task, uh, such as exporting videos from Unreal or doing lighting builds, for example, uh, this can speed that up a lot. And one of the problem with those things is it really sort of bogs your computer down. So exporting those tasks to a different computer to do is super useful. I'll get into that more in a second. Uh, and the second main thing that I thought was really cool is if you don't have a ray tracing graphics card, uh, you can send out your your assets or your scenes or whatever to one of these computers and you can use ray tracing um, i'll be showing that in a minute as well but that's really cool because ray tracing cards first of all are really hard to get a hold of at the moment just because of how everything's sold out um, but on top of that they're super expensive so if you want to render something out pretty quickly uh, and you just want to pay by the hour like i said about two and a half dollars an hour for a reasonable like solid solid computer you can go ahead and start using ray tracing um, instead of having to go out and spend about $1,500 on a graphics card. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. With that said, how exactly does it perform? I did some tests here to sort of show you guys uh, the speeds of these things. So the first thing I did was a test on my computer and my computer is pretty good. Like I professionally work on this uh, every single day. It's got a pretty solid uh, setup here. We have a RTX 2080, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 12 core processor with 3.8 gigahertz. 
Um, so yeah, I'm happy with these specs. I legitimately use them every single day while working. And uh, just to render out about 1200 frames of this lighthouse scene right here, it took about three minutes, which is pretty good. Like I'm in general happy with that. Uh, then moving over to the Renderow PC, like I said, this was the recommended second cheapest one, two and a half dollars an hour. Uh, it took the exact same scene and rendered out the exact same thing at the same specs at one minute. So a third of the time. Uh, which is pretty crazy. I mean, when you think about just sort of like going from three minutes to one minute, that's really not that big of a deal. Um, but like I said, <laughs> if you're doing something on a much larger scale that's taking about three hours, going from three hours to one hour is a pretty big deal, especially if it's a process that's making your computer unusable, right? Um, so yeah, I can I can totally see it being a, a super viable thing to want to export this kind of stuff to a service like Renderow. Um, not to mention, I render these videos out at 720p. I try to record my screen and render the set at 1080p, and my computer just didn't have the resources to do it. It just kept crashing. So if you were to, for example, want to render out like 4K video or something really intensive over a long period of time, you might not even be able to do it on your computer. So having a service like this where it's like a couple bucks to get that done uh, is kind of a no-brainer to me, and I, I probably will end up using that in the future. Alright, so now let's move on to that second point that I brought up, which is ray tracing. Uh, so ray tracing has slowly crept its way into kind of being the mainstream for a lot of game art these days. And uh, it's kind of tricky for some game artists because just getting their hands on ray tracing cards is just not really too easy. They're either way too expensive, being like I said, like $1,500, um, I think is a pretty reasonable price for a lot of them. Um, and just being sold out everywhere, so it's very tricky to sort of get access to that even though it's becoming kind of the gold standard with a lot of art. So here as an example I have a scene that I've set up inside of Marmots at Toolbag. Uh, this is actually uh, something I posted on ArtStation a while ago and if I just sort of change the camera uh, you can see this is kind of the final render and I used ray tracing for this. So if we go to the render tab, ray tracing is turned on. We can turn it on and off and you can see it's night and day essentially. Um, the quality. That being said, if I wasn't using ray tracing, I would have ended up tweaking some of these settings and reducing some of these effects. Uh, but nevertheless, with ray tracing on, we're getting the best looking result possible. Um, so, for those of you who don't have access to a ray tracing computer or card, what you could do is go to Renderow, and this is just sort of my setup here for the computers that I have. Uh, once again, this is sort of the cheaper computer that I've been using, and I've just gone ahead and turned it on. So I can just connect to via browser, and it's going to open up a new tab. You can connect however you want to. You can connect uh, remotely through like a desktop app, or through the browser, whatever works best for you. Uh, and if you're doing browser, you can just hit full screen. But just to sort of help with my recording, I'm not going to do so. Uh, but here we are. We sort of have it uh, set up here on the Rendero computer. Um, we are remoting in. For those of you who have never remoted in or people who are wondering about the whole latency thing, uh, I've been working remotely as an artist for over a year now because of the whole lockdown situation and um, I'm pretty used to kind of how how these kind of uh, remote connections are a little bit. Um, I've used quite a few different remote softwares over that past couple of, or the, the past year that I've experienced lockdown and uh, I would say as far as sort of latency goes, this is totally fine. I've had some software uh, that has been way worse than this, and I've had some that's been better than this. This is kind of just very, very standard uh, speeds and something you can totally work in. And the less complicated the the screen is, the faster it's going to be going. Uh, but you also need to have a, a decent internet connection. So just sort of look into that. I'm sure if you ask the support, they'll have a better idea as to what exactly you need. Um, but I don't think it needs to be anything too, too crazy. Uh, but anyways, getting back to the scene here, let's go back to that camera here. And once again, you can see that if I go to render, uh, we're using ray tracing here. So I can turn it on and off. And we're going once again back to those settings. So like I said, if you don't have an RTX card or a ray tracing card uh, and you just want to test this out, uh, you can go ahead and, and get into Renderow and give it a shot. Um, I think it's pretty reasonable their pricing plan and I was just looking at their homepage here. Free 30 day storage with $10 of credits. 
Uh, that's one thing I wanted to go over here. It really gives you a lot of information as to how much you're spending. And if I go to my statistics, I've been using this for about 4 hours and 16 minutes, and I've only used $20. So if you already had a scene and a model and all that set up, and you just wanted to try ray tracing for example, uh, considering this right here, um, you could probably go ahead and do that. Uh, the computer I'm using, you'd have to use for four hours to burn through all of those credits. Um, and I can guarantee you could set up your lighting scene in less than four hours. Um, so yeah, I think this is pretty cool. Uh, I'm actually really happy that this is a service. Like I said, I could see myself using it either as a student or someone who wants to explore ray tracing. Uh, but you can also use this for everyday modeling. Uh, if you don't have a computer that's good enough to handle modeling, you can just sort of uh, give it a shot with this if you want to do some really intensive video editing um, rendering big scenes anything like that anything you'd need a really powerful computer for uh, they got you covered here but um yeah like i said i just wanted to cover this because i would have liked to know how these kind of services were more applicable to game art uh, i always see them relating to sort of animation and vfx uh, but it's cool to know that we sort of have some uses for this as well and that for those of you who kind of need a strong computer whether it's uh, temporary or for just certain aspects of your pipeline you kind of have those options out there um, like Rendero. So anyways guys thank you for checking out this video be sure to go uh, check out their website I'll have them linked in the description below I think they're pretty awesome like I said everything is super intuitive and uh, easy to understand seems like they have a lot of tutorials and uh, they're getting bigger and bigger. They have some cool things coming up in the future and they're uh, super super transparent and easy to sort of get a hold of. So uh, yeah, definitely worth checking out. Hopefully you guys can get some good use out of them. But until next time, until that next tutorial I teased you guys with, hopefully you guys have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya!